Good morning. You're probably actually seeing this at a whole bunch of different times. If you're joining me live and you're on the West Coast, it's morning still. Um, if you're anywhere else, <laughs> anywhere else in the rest of the country, it's not morning. So um, I'm Christina with leadsandleverage.com and I like to get on with you guys and talk about, well, everything and help you with your struggles and, and Q&A and just kind of help you get over the next hump, the next mountain, the next, you know, the little next bump and all that you're doing. So today, actually, um, make sure a couple things. First of all, click subscribe. And I never remember, I'm, I'm looking at the camera, but I never remember which side the subscribe option is on, but it's usually up at the top. And if you hover with your mouse or you're you know, over this live video, you can click that live subscribe and you'll be notified when I go live. At least that's the hope. So <clears throat> anyway, live streaming is so awesome. I love it because I get to talk to you guys. I get to um, hear your comments. So make sure you tell me, ask me your questions, talk, let me know you're here. I'd love to know where everybody's from, where you guys are kind of tuning in from. Um, what's it, you know, I like to know where everybody is. We've got people from all over the world um, that I love this. I love, I get to kind of travel virtually, um, connect with you guys. So do let me know who's here and um, how are you doing? That's really kind of where it's at. Um, today I actually have a little bit, I have a focus. This month for May, I'm really focusing on um, blogging. And by that, I mean, I'm, I know I, I teach you guys how to leverage Facebook and how to capture, convert, and close Facebook leads. But the thing is, is that our foundation and everything that we do uh, starts in, in a hub. And that hub is our blog. And I really wanted to focus on blogging this much be month because for a couple of reasons. One is because um, a lot of my members, my Facebook Domination Secret members, a lot of my members are building their own blogs and creating their content. It's often, often called content marketing, um, creating their own content. And they're, they're, they're having some struggles, um, struggles from consistency, from, um, I'm trying to remember all the different things, overthinking some of the process, not knowing the platforms to use, um, getting readers. I'm looking, I'm looking at my little list here, feeling behind things like that. And what I did, I actually created um, get your blog on. It's a five day blogging challenge. And it, it's just really to get you started to, to get, help you guys see that blogging is not that big, crazy, mythical, mystical thing that's out there. It's not an overwhelming process. Um, in fact, once you start getting into the groove of it, it's, it's, it's very easy. It flows. Um, it happens, it, it comes from you, and then you want to give more of it. And so I, I created Get Your Blog On, um, the five-day blogging challenge for you as a real estate agent, just to help you get over that hurdle. So definitely hop onto that. It's actually, I put the link in the text of this um, live stream, but it's leadsandleverage.com slash G-Y-B-O for Get Your Blog On, G-Y-B-O. So let's talk about... Um, one of the comments that I see a lot is I'm struggling. I'm really, I'm struggling and it's usually struggling with a whole bunch of things, but I'm struggling. I'm struggling with consistency. I'm struggling with, um, knowing what tools to use. I am struggling with just getting started. I'm struggling. So oftentimes, um, <sighs> Overcoming the struggle, the, the, the result of your journey, who you become, takes place in the struggle, just so you guys know. So who you're going to become and, and what you're going to do and what you're going to create, out of the struggle, that's what comes. I kind of think of that, a phoenix, you know, out of the ashes, ashes, this glorious bird. Um, and that's, I know that sounds like zen and woo-woo and whatever, but it really is. When we, when we embrace the struggle, when we um, understand the struggle for what it is, so we, we um, do some internalizing and figure out what the struggle is, and only then, when we determine what it is, can we actually overcome the struggle. And one of the um, biggest struggles that I see agents 
um, having when it comes to blogging is focusing on the outcome. We're always focusing on the outcome. Is, is this, well, if I write this, will anybody read it? Uh, if I post this, will it actually bring me leads? If I spend my time doing this, um, should I, would I be better off spending my time doing something else? So it's always on the outcome. What's the outcome? And there's this great phrase. I do not know who it's from. I cannot remember who it's from, but it goes like something like this. And I'm sure I, I'm, I have internalized it and I've changed it to fit me, but it's focus on the process, not the outcome. So when you set a goal and say that goal is I'm going to write a blog post and you're focusing on the outcome you're not actually overcoming the struggles of the process. You're just focusing on the outcome and you kind of decide, oh, well, that's not gonna happen for me and that's not gonna work for me or that's too monumental, that's too big. So you need to focus on the process. So, okay, in the five-day blogging challenge, here's a perfect example. In the five-day blogging challenge, um, I have you start with finding a topic and um, different process, get topic, headline, skeletal outline, writing it, editing, publishing. So we kind of go through that whole process. And one of the things that we tend to do is we go, oh, well, I can write stuff, but will anybody read it? And so we're focusing on the outcome and we're not doing the writing. So I can tell you right now that if you're not actually writing anything, nobody's going to read it. I mean, that sounds so normal, that sounds so like obvious, but that's what we do. We think, oh, nobody's gonna read it, so we don't write it, but that's a problem. Or we, we think, oh, it's gonna take too much work. Well, we don't really know how much work it's gonna take. We also don't know the reward. Um, so you need to focus on the process, not the outcome. Focus on getting that blog post out there. Focus on helping, focus on consistency. Write a little bit every single day. Um, just focus on doing that every day. So focus on the process, not the outcome. Babs Gorman, you said it, it didn't work. And I'm, I'm not sure what you mean by that. I am acknowledging your comment, but I, I don't know what you mean by it didn't work. So um, if you could clarify that for me, that would be great. Um, so when I talk about that, there's something I am, um, and this is a little bit off of blogging, but it's part of it. I actually, um, this past weekend, I was at an event and I uh, committed to um, a pretty big goal for myself. And it was actually, it's not even just a stretch goal. It's like, it, it's huge. And um, when I decided to commit to this goal, um, so that's the outcome. When I decided to commit to this goal, I, I was thinking about it in my head and I go, okay, what do I have in place right now that makes me think I could even begin to, that this is not just as like a pie in the sky dream goal. So I'm, what do I have in place already right now? So I, I assessed what I have in place. I'm like, yeah, okay. So here's the process. Here's what I need to do. Here are things I need to do. They're already in place. Now I just need to do them. So that's the exact same thing when it comes to writing your blog and getting your blog post out. It is the process, not the outcome. The process, going through the process, if you know what the process is, the process is, you know what, you need to get published. You need to get post out there and published because the outcome of that is going to be, the results of that are going to be all the things you think about. Um, traffic, exposure, leads, closings, they're gonna all be out there. They're all out there, but the process it, those won't happen if you don't go through the process. So same thing when I think about this big goal, it's like, well, okay, no, this is not unrealistic. I, I have a really big goal and I know the process. This is the process. This is what I need to do every day, every week, each month. It's a six month goal. So um, the same with blogging. If you know, that's why I gave you guys the five day blogging challenge. Um, and that's what you can sign up for, leadsandleverage.com slash G-Y-B-O. I put that out there because it gets you into the process, the steps of the process. We tend to overanalyze the platforms, we tend to overanalyze um, how to get traffic there, we tend to overanalyze, now, those are not, I'm not saying that any of those are not important, not by any means, those are important. They're not as important as getting the process done. And guess what, the most important piece of the process is getting blogs written, or video blogs done, either one of those. Um, so when I say blog, I don't care how you create the content, the fact that you are creating content and getting it out there. That's what I mean. So it can be video, it can be blogging, it can be a podcast, I don't care. You're getting it out there. 
So that's the thing, the process, the process of doing that, the process of getting it written every day. So for me, I, you know, I write for Inman and I do live streams and I have my membership. Um, people that I like to, or I, part of one of the things that I do is I give trainings, really in-depth trainings twice a month for them. I have um, Q and A's, I have all these different things. So I focus on the process, the process. So focus on the process, not the outcome. Do you guys have any other questions? Any questions at all? I'm only about 10 minutes in, and I know that with live streaming, it takes a while for y'all to get here. There are some people watching it. I don't know who's watching it. It doesn't tell me until you actually comment and join in. But I, I just want you guys to realize that when we, when we overwhelm ourselves with the thought of the results or the thought of the outcome, um, we often decide that it's not possible or we can't do it or I'm not going to go there before we've even tried. Hey, Jerry. And um, here's, here's the thing. I'm not going to tell you what my goal was because that's for me and my mastermind group. But I, um, I went to my first, I'm in a new um, implementation mastermind club that I'm paying for, um, you know, when you pay for something, you want to do it. And before I committed, I was making sure that I was in a mindset that, yeah, I can do this. So when we went to our very first meeting, and this is all part of focusing on the process, not the outcome, we went to our very first meeting Sunday, and one of our tasks was, you know what, you've got six months between now and our next main event. What's your goal? What is one goal? What, what is your one goal? So I wrote down, they said, write it down. So I wrote down my one goal. And then, after we wrote it down, <laughs> this is the part that he said, you know what, you need to turn to the person on your left and right, or right and left, whatever, and you need to tell them your goal and commit to that goal. <laughs> and I turned to the person next to me, and I went white. And um, she looked at me, she said, are you okay? <laughs> I said, I am. <laughs> she goes, what did you write down? I'm like, well, I wrote down a pretty big goal. This is kind of, this is a big one. And so I told it to my, I was sick to my stomach. Um, I was white and I'm like, I'm just going to say this. I'm going to say it out loud. So I said it to her and she was like, wow. Okay. For me, I mean, she didn't know a lot about my business, but the point was that they were having us do was to say our goal out loud, to commit to our goal out loud. And that's one of the reasons in that five day vlogging challenge that I have you go right in, into the group and say, Hey, this is the topic I'm doing. I want you in the group committing every day, at least you know, to just to get yourself going. So I said this goal out loud to two different people. And then I shared it with my in-person or a couple of my in-person mastermind people. And um, now I'm like, I, I was immediately, immediately going through thinking, okay, I need to make sure I have the tools in place. I need to make sure I can actually do this. This is not something I can skate by. I tend to, me, I tend to be, um, I, th you know, I, I use the excuse, oh, I'm good under pressure. So I, I, sometimes I do things last minute and I'm like, I can't do this. I can't do that last minute stuff with this. It's not going to work with this. I actually have to start now, today. So, um, <laughs> It was pretty amazing. And that's one of the reasons that I really, really want you guys um, to make that commitment. Go into the blogging challenge and make that commitment to, hey, I'm going to finish this. It may take you longer than five days. The point is, I'm going to finish the challenge. I'm going to finish it, but I'm going to focus on the process, not the outcome. So that is the key. So my mantra that goes through my mind, there's two mantras. One, focus on the process, not the outcome. The other mantra is because of my goal that I have now when I choose, I'm thinking about choosing not to do something, I'm like, you're throwing away your goal, into your goal, whatever your goal is. Are you willing to throw away X, Y, Z to not write for your 50 minutes today. Cause I, I write my, one of my, my one thing for the day, um, from the book, the one thing, Gary Keller, my one thing every single day is to write for 50 minutes. That is my one thing that's changed my business. That's changing my business. That changes me and it helps me uh, teach better. It helps me teach you guys better. It helps me understand you better. Um, so that's my one thing. And I'm, I, it's like, well, if you're not willing to do your 50 minutes, then you don't really want X, Y, Z. Are you willing to throw that away? So that's, when you change 
when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. That's Wayne Dwyer. I love that phrase. I didn't realize I told my husband earlier today, I just looked at him and I said, oh, I'm not willing to throw away XYZ. That is my goal, which I'm not sharing with you guys, but I'm not willing to throw away XYZ to do this instead. I'm going to stick to my process, my process, my process. So my whole thing with this is we struggle because we don't stick to a process. We focus on an outcome. And so we don't stick to a process. And there is a process that works to get blogs written. And I gave it to you in the five-day blogging challenge. It's free. I'm not selling anything. It's free. Five-day blogging challenge. And it's leadsandleverage.com slash GYBO. Hey, Rebecca. Hey, Myra. Hey, Jerry. Hey, Babs. I see all you guys tuning in. Keeps popping out. It's like people are tuning in. So questions about blogging, blogging struggles. Um, I have so much for you guys. These, all these, uh, Jerry, Myra, Rick, Rebecca are all part of my um, Facebook Domination Secret membership, and I'm so excited. I <laughs> kind of, I, I had some pivotal um, inspiration this weekend, and I cannot wa wait to share it with you guys. Hi, Jay. So I cannot wait to make some changes in there and um, really help you. We need to start creating imperfect, inspired action. We just need to implement. Um, implementing, you know, the consistency, the what do I do, the how do I do it, and all that stuff, that's all important, but the whole just just doing it, no matter how perfect or imperfect it is, this live stream, I was like, oh, I got to get back to live streaming because I like talking to you guys. I got to do it, and so about an hour ago, I was like, oh, that means now. I have to do it now. I have to do it today, so totally imperfect, but here we go, so that's why I'm talking about focusing on the process, all of this is about the process, you guys. Hey, Mary Francis, one of my buddies from this weekend. So focus on the process, not the outcome. That's number one. And number two, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Yeah, uh, Marie says, my struggle is time as well, as well as staying focused. Yeah, part of, okay, so let me give you a couple tips on this. So, um, I tend to be a little bit blunt about this specific subject of time, mostly, and I, I just want you to know, Marie, it's not because of you, it is because of me, and I know my behavior, and I know my, um, my, my previous thought process on all this. So here's the thing. If something's important to you, um, you're going to find the time for it. We all do. We all, it's just the way we are. If something, you know, we don't have money, um, but if something's important to us and we want it, we somehow find the money to do it. It's the same thing with time. So, um, but then we kind of like, we're like, but I don't have time. So here I, I actually have some, some thoughts to help challenge you on this. First of all, the, um, average American watches four hours of TV a day. That's not the TV is on four hours. I mean, the average American watches four hours of TV a day. And um, whether you watch four hours of TV or not, that's not my point. Um, I don't have time to physically turn on my TV. I, I don't. I'm not willing to compromise time um, to turn on my TV. Now, that's me. That's where I'm at. That's not everybody. That's where I'm at now. I'm just not willing to do it. The TV, it doesn't, um, I'd rather do other things to relax. I'd rather do other things to get my brain into um, a better state for sleep. I'd rather, just anything. So so check, check out what you're doing. Um, yeah, Rebecca's like, I just canceled our cable TV. Such a waste. We have not had live TV in almost 15 years. And we can't believe that. We're just like, and we're not like these crazies, like we don't have TV. We have TV. We, we have Netflix. We have um, uh, Amazon. We have et cetera. But when I do watch it, it's a very focused, you know, like, oh, let's watch a movie together. Let's plan it. Let's watch a movie. Let's do this. It's intentional. It's intentional. I just don't, I don't like it on. And I don't keep the TV on during the day. That's another thing that we tend to do. And I don't know the stats on this one, but another thing that we tend to do is keep the TV on during the day. And what it does is it distracts us. It gets us um, to this place of, like you get sucked in. Like when I go to my parents, my parents always have the TV on. When I go to my parents, I'm like TV. And I, they're, I'm, I'm there to see them. But the TV's on, and so I get sucked into it. So, you know, turn off the TV. Um, the other thing, <laughs> I know I teach Facebook. I know I teach you guys how to capture, convert, and close leads on Facebook. But you need to turn off Facebook. <laughs> you need to turn off Facebook notifications. 
um, you need to turn off your notification. I mean, you need to stay out of the real estate groups on Facebook. In fact, I actually, this is going to be funny. I wasn't actually going to do this today, but I'm going to do this today. Um, I... I'm going to challenge you, and I, I'm still trying, kind of helping Marie find some time. Um, one of the things that I notice about myself, um, I I don't I, I join things like groups or email lists and things like that. I join things, and I don't want to leave them because I don't want to miss anything. I'm afraid of missing out, or I, I I'm not anymore. But I I that's why I don't leave things. So this morning I actually went through. And I took myself out of six or seven Facebook groups. And I do that very often. I often do that because I'll check groups out to see if they're going to actually help me um, go the path that I want to go. But I've noticed that when I'm a member of the group, I get distracted. So first of all, the very first time I join a group, I turn off all notifications in that group. That helps me. In fact, so that I, it doesn't even pop up. I don't, I don't want to see the little red number that it pops up. So I turn off my notifications for the group. Then second, I just, I kind of go through and look and see. And if it doesn't immediately vibe with me or jive with me, I leave the group. Now, when I forget to leave the group, that's when I get overwhelmed. And sometimes it, a, a group is good for a time and I need to be out of it. So I challenge you, I actually want to challenge you guys. How many Facebook groups, and I'm reading this because I actually wrote down some challenges. I was thinking of challenging you guys over time, but I'll do this one today. Um, how many Facebook groups can you leave today? How many are, you know, how many can you leave today? And you're going to face in your gut, you're going to face that fear of, oh, I might miss out, or I might need this, or I might whatever. Just remember, you can always rejoin the group. Um, but how many, how many will you leave today? I really want to challenge you to leave at least five Facebook groups today. Sounds like a lot, but I, I want to challenge you. <laughs> Rebecca knew it before I even said it. Yes, Rebecca, I am making you leave groups. I want to challenge you to remove yourself from five, but here's the deal. You've succeeded if you remove yourself from even one group. You've succeeded. You've started that process. You've let it go. You've released it. Um, so that's a really good, that's a good place to be. The other thing, and I'm still answering Marie's question, so I'm going to get to more of you guys. The other thing, Marie, finding the time, um, I have noticed that if I leave Facebook open, leave my news feed open, I tend to scroll through and I, I've wasted time, five, seven, eight minutes here and there throughout the day adds up to an hour or two. So I've turned off all notifications. My, I actually have hidden my Facebook app on my phone. I leave open I, there's two things I do leave open because I run private groups on Facebook for my business, for my members, and for people who are interested. Um, I leave the uh, Facebook groups, at, the Facebook, the Facebook groups app, and the Facebook pages app because of my business. I don't leave my feed up. I don't leave feed, so that I can't just oh it's not on there. I don't just arbitrarily click over to it. Eh, most of the time, it still snags me. It's I'll be like. Ooh, my brain will start going somewhere and I'll want to go over to Facebook. So there's that. Um, the, the other thing about time, we get so easily distracted. So I actually created a, um, a playlist on iTunes and I have what I call my content creation playlist. I just found music that, um, gets the, um, my heart pumping and not in a, I mean, some people like, like pit, pit bull and stuff like that. I'm going to reveal this. I like Taylor Swift. I like, Megan Trainer. I like, it's just enough of a beat to keep me energized, but not to distract me. So I just revealed my teenage girl stuff. So yes, yes, I'm a 14 year old girl inside. But the point is, is that I, I created a content play. I mean, there's some Usher in there. There's some train in there. There's some other things like that in there. But it, the point is, is it keeps me in that energized focused state. And I put my earbuds in. I have some good earbuds that have some, um, silencing so I can't hear um, and I work in those and that's where I do my content creation and I set my alarm for 50 minutes and after 50 minutes I'm done I get up I walk around I do something else if I am on a like a thought train or a thought focus I still am done I need to get up I need to move I need to get the blood flowing um, and then I can come back to it if I want to but the point is is I did my 50 minutes I did it so that helps me if I do that first it helps me 
The other thing that I'm really adopting um, for time saver stuff, and I know we, we went from focusing on the process, not the outcome, and from the struggle, but this helps with all of that. The other thing that I'm doing, I am really, really working at not picking up my phone in the morning. Now, that's a little bit harder than I thought it would be because I, a couple of reasons, I use an, a sleep app to help monitor my sleep, and I like to quickly look at the calendar for the day. Um, because I'm really training my brain to not ponder and think problems when I don't need to be thinking about them. So I'm doing some meditating to help not be distracted in that realm. So I, I was having a hard time. But so what I do is real quick before I go to sleep at night, I look at my calendar. I go, okay, I don't know. I, this is what I need to do first. And this is second. We're good. So I just do my sleep app. And then for the most part, I'm pretty consistent mm, 60, 70% of the time. I don't pick up, I just pick up my phone to turn off my sleep app and to monitor my heartbeat. That's it. I put it back down. I go do my stuff. After my one thing is done, after all the things that I want to do, I like to yeah, get up and I want to stretch and I want to exercise and I want to have a, a nice um, health shake and then I want to do my one thing. That's kind of my order. I meditate in there too and, so, and have my time with God in there too. So all of that, that's my thing. Then I can look at my phone. So that has... I, I, that process, creating a morning routine, has changed my, I don't have time. I found time to do what I needed to do. And I get that done. I, I, now, I get up insanely early. You don't have to get up insanely early. I do. I get up insanely early. Well, compared to a lot of people. Um, but you don't have to. But the point is, I do it because I know what my life gets like. If I were to get up at 7 every morning, even 6, I wouldn't have enough time to do what I need to want, what I want done without interruptions. I have a family. Um, and... I have a family. <laughs> no matter how many boundaries you set, your family still interrupts you, especially when you work from home. So focus on the process. So my process is to get through my daily routine every day so that I have time to do these other things. Um, so hopefully that helped. I know we kind of went from struggling over here, but it is about getting stuff written, about getting it done. That's all this. Okay, so let's see. Um... Yeah. Mary Frances says, I think one issue with finding time, at least for me, is that we will procrastinate on things that have huge potential to change our lives because we have some mental block about succeeding. You know, it's funny that you say that, Mary Frances, because I was thinking about that this morning um, with my huge goal that I have. Um, I was like, I was talking to my coach this morning and he was saying, um, or I was saying, I was like, you know, I think that I've never really committed to something like that out in public view, out so people know, because I don't want to look like a failure. I'm like, I'm either going to achieve this beyond my wildest dreams or fail spectacularly. I don't know. I have to be okay with failing. Uh, but it's not failing if I focus on the process. And you're right. It is it's some mental block about succeeding. That was mine. That is mine. I'm like, I just don't want to be seen as a failure. But it won't be seen as, and I look at it, I'm like, well, actually, nobody will think it's a failure, only me, because I didn't get X, Y, Z. Even if I don't get all the way to Z, if I do what I need to do, and I still get to L, you know, through the alphabet, it was awesome. I succeeded. So I tend to be like an all or nothing kind of person. Yeah, uh, and this is my, this is why I'm talking about focus on the process, not the outcome, because I tend to focus on the outcome. Ooh, that's me. Um, <laughs> And to focus on. So you should hear in my head. It's like focus on the process, not the outcome. Focus on the process, not the outcome. Focus. That is what's going through my head constantly lately. Oh yes, actually, Rebecca asks. I searched for an app that tracks how much time we spend on certain apps like Facebook, but I couldn't find one. Any suggestions? Yes. Um, shoot, let me hop onto my computer. I uh, what was that app called? Oh my gosh. I used it for a little bit, but it ended up not working for me because I'm in the Facebook groups for our business too much. So it kept telling me I was on wasting my time on social media. I'm like, I'm answering questions <laughs> for people. And this, this right here, this live stream, that counted against me too because I'm on Facebook. So um, it's called, it's not called Time Machine. It's called, um, oh, let me see, uh, time tracking software. Um, I'll see if I can find it. I can't remember. Um, oh my goodness. It was a time. I'll find it. You remind me inside the group. Um, Rebecca, I can't remember what it was unless somebody else shares it, but I can't remember. Yeah. It, I don't know that it's an app though. It's on your computer. 
Mary Frances, this is great too. Um, she unfollowed everyone so that her newsfeed is only business and it has saved at least an hour every day. That's insane. That's really good. not insane bad. That's insane good. Um, and I have my Facebook friends and lists like Christina teaches so I can use those lists to catch up. Oh, that's a good idea on certain groups of people when I make time for that after my one thing is done. That's a really, really good idea. Um, I know we had talked about that in our mastermind group. Mary Frances, she's in my mastermind group. Um, in one of my mastermind groups. And yeah, we talked about that. I, thought, I, I, you know, I might need to do that. I have a lot of people on my thing. I'll have to do it. It is hard, Rebecca. Mary Frances says it was scary, but productivity and my ability to be present soared in an amazing way when I unfollowed everyone, deleted the Facebook app, and my forum apps. That's a really good. <laughs> Mary Frances said, I, yes, you do get up insanely early. You know what, Mary Frances? When we were in Phoenix, Mary Frances and I were in Phoenix together uh, this past weekend. I am, um, that wasn't early. That wasn't early. I was getting up later for you guys, so I wouldn't like freak you guys out. Let's see. Oh, a Time Rabbit app. Awesome. Thank you, Jay. Yes. Yeah, so so you know, um, it is all about focusing on the process, not the outcome. What is the process? What are the steps you need to take? And I, and it doesn't mean focus on like, well, I need to know the software. I know need to know that. No, the, the process like, if I am writing, if I want to achieve X, Y, Z, and I know that getting blog posts published are going to help me achieve X, Y, Z, it's going to get my presence on on the internet to go crazy through the roof. It's going to help me build my reputation. It's going to help me build no like, and trust relationships. It's going to change my business. I know it. I've seen it do it to other people. It will work for me. It's a formula, guys. It will work for me. If you know that, then you need to focus on the process. Just keep focusing on the process. Most people give up right before they're set to succeed. Um, I've done it. Only you don't realize that's where you're at. So just stay with it. Focus on the process. If you're um, an athlete and you're going to run a marathon, you don't focus on the 26.4 miles of the marathon. You focus on the process. You focus on day one. I'm going to run three miles today. Day two, I'm going to run four miles today. You know, week one, it's three miles. Week two, it's five miles. Week whatever. Each, you focus on the process, just getting your daily miles down. And then as you get closer, you get bigger and bigger and bigger. But if you focused on trying to run 26.4 miles at the very beginning, it's not going to happen. It's not going to work. So if you're an athlete or you run or anything like that, I hope that analogy works for you because it's that's what it is. So don't focus on the outcome. Focus on the process. Hopefully that'll help you guys. So that was really what today was about, getting over the struggle. A lot of the times our struggle is, most of the times our, our struggle is mental. Um, and mental meaning we um, focus on the outcome and it's a bit overwhelming. And um, so then we forget about the process that gets us there. And um, I missed the other thought that I wanted to share with you on that, but just make sure you focus on the process. Join the Get Your Blog On Challenge. It's a five-day blogging challenge. It is free. We have, I, you get five emails, one a day, um, with I've done some video for you guys to help you think through it, to help you um, get your bearings on it and get it going. It's at leadsandleverage.com slash G-Y-B-O. So I am actually going to sign off. I have a new member orientation here in about an hour. And I hope this was good for you guys. I love your engagement. I love you guys talking to me. I love it. 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 So um, let's do this. Have an awesome day. Focus on the process, not the outcome. And when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Compliments of Wayne Dwyer. Talk to you guys later.